Hi, thank you for joining us. I'm David Wild. Uh, I'm a lover of music. Uh, the directorial debut of Sia, who joins us along with Leslie Odom Jr., Maddie Ziegler, and Kate Hudson. To start it off, I just want to say uh, my name is David Wild. I'm a music lover in every way, and even more so because of this movie. And whenever you see something, uh, you know, to me, this is a movie. Uh, it's so powerful, moving. Uh, unique. And when something like that happens, I got to ask, what went so right to make this movie? I guess uh, the universe. That's what I kept saying during the making of it was like, well, you know, I chose all of, I cast all of you from social media. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I cast Maddie a long time ago in my first video chandelier. And then I saw Leslie in Hamilton and then I tweeted him and said, do you want to star in my movie? And then we had lunch and <clears throat> he said yes. And then um, I saw Kate singing on Instagram some uh, Christmas carol or something. So I asked for a meeting with her and um, she said I was made for this role. And I said, will you shave your head? And she said yes. And I was like, bum. So <laughs> it was all very universal. It was all like, and, if, and then during the making of it, if there was ever any, you know, um, problems, we'd just pivot. And I just think to myself, well, this is, you know, God, whoever God is, this is God's plan and this is what's meant to happen and this is going to make the movie better. So instead of viewing things as problems, I viewed them as gifts. How about for the rest of you? What, what do you think made this? Again, it's uh, very, so many strong performances, so, such a daring movie in many ways. And it all connects, and it's a movie about connection. So for you, what what made you connect with this movie? I'll go first. <laughs> um, I think, you know, there, there's, there's a couple things at play, as it always is with any film, you know. I mean, it all, it all starts with the writer, you know. It all starts with the screenplay. And in this particular story you have Dallas and Sia who are very very close and connected and 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 you can feel that intimacy on the page um and and the story is a, was it was something that I hadn't really read for for a long long time and um and you can you 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 can feel so so when Sia brings her sensibility to anything I think a lot of times you have people talk about Sia's work and how prolific she is and and how, uh, you know, genius is the word that I hear all, all the time. And you really kind of want to break it down. And when you when you work with Sia, you realize that there's a there's a childlike connection that that comes out in the way that she sees things. And it's 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 so ex explosive and imaginative and you read it on the page and then you'd experience it on set. So whenever we kind of got into the, you know, the, the sort of the, the expression or the, these, these, the, the song or the, or the, the, the choreography, it has this sort of like childlike essence to it. And yet Sia and what she's been through in her life and everything she put on the page is weighted and it's, and it's intense and it's about love and it's about redemption. So you have this like amazing, woven uh, complex story and 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 only someone like Sia could really be the person at the helm of doing something like that. I realized as I was watching it late at night and I was riveted, I was thinking, I can't even relate to anything else I've ever seen in terms of what it's making me feel. And it took me a while and I thought, it makes me as a movie feel like when I first heard the album Tommy by The Who and maybe the movie Birdie. So anything that ends with an E, you know, an I, but it was so unique. So for each of, for Maddie and Leslie, also ending an E, uh, for you two, uh, what, what drew you to this and what, what connects with you about this movie? Uh, for me, I mean, like Sia said, she told me when I was, I think 11 or 12 that we'd be doing this film. And I instantly was so intrigued just because one, I, anything that involves Sia, I want to do forever because we are a duo and it's just the best. And two, I, as much as I was so scared, I really felt like I could take on this character for some reason, even though I had no connection to it. Um, and then I was already huge fans of like Kate and Leslie. And so I was like, 
this is just going to be a dream come true. And ultimately, like, it just felt like a huge family on set, which was so nice. And every day to me was like just a dream. It was just so much fun. And I learned so much throughout the process. And I feel like, like you were saying, like everyone can relate to this in their own way, whether it be like a childlike type of feel, or I don't know. I just, I love that it brought so much love and community together. And it was just, it was amazing. So it's say. I'm glad you said that, Maddie. I did say to the, all of the crew before we started, I said, um, I, we got together and I said, I want you to remember every day when you come to work that we're here because we care about the autism community and we care about the caregivers and we care about all of the people on the spectrum and all of those who are being represented in film. And also, I had, I just loved films like Forrest Gump and Rain Man and What's Eating Gilbert Grape, and I just hadn't seen anything good like that. Um, just, you know, like the, I, I wanted to break your heart, make you laugh, and then put it back together again and give you a happy end. Like that was the, I, that was, I, those, that's what film, when I was growing up, good film, you know, I travelled, it was chiaroscuro, you had like, light, dark, and hopefully some humour as well. And then I always like a Hollywood ending myself. But, um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll settle for a, you know, I'll settle for a very un, unsatisfying ending. But for me personally, I want, I want people to leave the theatre um, emotional but um, excited and happy. Like and smiling happy. and crying all at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> and... And Leslie, for you, what made you want to join? Because this, these characters do become a family. And what made you want to join this music family? Well, you know, you asked about what, um, what went right. I love that question. And um, in my experience, that's, it is always top down. Really hard to lead from the back. Really hard to lead from the rear. You know, if, um, if you have people in those leadership positions, that's Sia, that's Kate and Maddie. You know, if you have people there that are thinking about the ecosystem on the set and, you know, there to, to, to really put others before themselves and they're focused on the work in a certain kind of way, everybody else falls in line. So I think that that's what went right. You know, Sia had a had a clear vision as she often does. She always does. And um, that was our, those were, that was our blueprint. You know, that was our, you know, we knew <clears throat> that the architect had given us good, good plans. Good bodies. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it was our job to, to build it out. Ryan too. Ryan's a big part of that. I'm sure you'll ask about Ryan, but um, so that's, that's what yeah. I think. You said right. lines, and I was remembering that time we were having a terrible struggle in the kitchen with the scene, and yeah. I was like, fuck this, let's all go into the room. So me, you, and Kate, we went into the room and we rewrote the scene. Do you remember yeah. that? I, mm -hmm. yeah. I just was like, I don't care to be the boss of everything, <laughs> the leader of everything. I care for it to be the best that it can be. And I'm not afraid to be wrong. I'm not, I'm not afraid to say, well, you've done this before. This was my first project ever. It was baptism by fire. So I'm not afraid to say to the director of photography, well, maybe you know best. So, or or the producer, um, okay, we'll definitely do, I'll do one more take for you. And thank God we did because we needed those takes. Um, and I don't need to be the sole writer of this movie. You guys got to write some of this movie too because, um, you know, when it's not working, I'm not like it. I don't know. There's, I find that ego only uh, only ruins projects, and collaboration is what made made this beautiful for us. Is that it felt for me anyway? It felt like we were all collaborating, and we had a lot of laughs. Yes, we did. Uh, Sia, for you, uh, I you know I've been working on the Grammys for twenty years, and I never forget when you and Maddie came in, and with Kristen Wiig, and did I got to see your unbelievable creative force playing out on our Grammy stage. Uh, but I wonder, movies, making your directorial debut, it's a daunting, usually it's daunting for anyone. Was it even daunting for you? And uh, did you have any second thoughts about 
taking on you you reinvent the musical you do uh, uh one of the you know human drama human comedy it, it couldn't be a more ambitious movie in that way yeah well i was really naive so i think if i had known what it was going to be like because it was it it's the hardest thing i've ever done um and yes i did like no i i, I didn't even think oh most directors just direct they don't also like design the costumes and write the songs and you know and so I definitely did um I was I loved it it was exhilarating every single day I loved prep I loved every day of shooting I loved it um even when we had problems it was fun to pivot it was like a puzzle and fun um but I hated editing it made me sick the way that I shot was really unconventional it was very fluid and um, so it was actually very difficult for the editors. I made it accidentally because of my naivety. I, I made it very difficult because I was doing a lot of free flowing camera work. So to edit between like you, like, you, you know, you, normally you block something out and you stick to that. And every take you do of each character in that scene, you stick to that camera blocking or the blocking of all of the characters. But I didn't really know about that. <laughs> and, and and the DP did, but he was he was kind of like, he was willing to just go on this journey with me of like, <laughs> <laughs> and it made it, yeah, and it made it really hard to to um, to edit. I also want to jump in here because you know this is this the the script you know it does take a particular type of editor to be able to do what is asked of for for this movie. I mean, you know, you it it's not easy to transition from this hyper real world into uh, you know a a, a totally different narr narrative i mean because and 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 the and the narrative is so important to the story and so you what it's like two different sensibilities and so i think that the process just cuz you know i've been connected to this since we've stopped it the process has taken these steps of you know some people would come in they'd really understand how to get that like hyper real beautiful moments but they you know sometimes it was difficult to get to, to seamlessly move into those, you know, the, the how colorful my, and, yeah. My, yeah. Vince was right. always asking me, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? And I, we did shoot it all that there were spotlights at first. And that's what I wanted. It would go from the real world, you would be spotlit, and then it would take you into this you being spotlit in the musical um, world. But that movie was two hours and 51 minutes long. And I... Uh, uh, not even, uh, not even I think I can maintain the. <laughs> so, so we had to figure out new ways to transition, and it, that was the really the hardest bit, and it was my fault because Vince was always asking me how, like, what if we could, we we need other ways just in case this way doesn't work, we need other ways that we can transition, and just gratefully we had occasionally shots and we were able to move shots around so that eventually if we didn't use the spotlight for every single transition but we did we did manage to find just luckily like moving into beautiful things Leslie we just managed to find a shot of you uh, at the same angle and then it just goes straight into beautiful things but yeah that, the transition is the hardest part for definitely and it was definitely my fault because I was naive that number, it's just so beautiful. I can't take it. I know, it's one of the best ones. Oh. But people say they love that one, Leslie. That, that's, uh, and also because, you know, you're, it, you, it's a waste. I would feel like it was a wasted, uh, it was a bit wasted because we had other songs that you sang and um, we didn't get them in the movie. And it, well, uh, you it's know, not using a blank Scrabble piece. You know, because well, you're an incredible singer. So you having only one and a half songs in the movie. Kate, Kate knows. Kate knows better than better than uh, all of us. You know what? How these things come together after it is such a collaborative art form film. You know, and that that. It really, it's a director's medium, but but it's that that editor, right, Kate? I mean, like the editor is 
the second director. They can make you better, they can make you worse. And so what I've seen in this movie uh, and seeing several cuts of it along the way, and I was never as hard on it as you were, Sia, but um, was, was seeing, like you said, I mean, the things that had to go, the things that got chipped away, the things that were combined, it's a new thing. Like what's actually been made is uh, a new thing that I don't know if any of us could have imagined while we were making it. No, I so it, it, it it says something about what we did too because there's so many good movies in this movie. You, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, ah, it, it's like okay, you know, we would we would do a cut and it would be like you'd lose one number and you'd be like, oh fuck, like okay, but then it totally would take on a different life of a movie and it really was. I mean, if you were to go into film school with this with this movie, it would be really interesting because it's one of those there's just there was so much um and 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 so it was writing a lot less pages in the script <laughs> it's like who is it spielberg isn't it spielberg who says the movie's made in the editing room you know and 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 literally this is one of those movies where you would go oh wow you could make multiple movies here you know inside of this movie it's part of what i love about it and why i think it's 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 you know it feels it feels refreshing it's like you have this, I mean, you could take all the music out of it and you'd have a beautiful story. And it was originally not a musical, but then everyone was like, you're fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I finally listened. <laughs> and so then I just found some songs, threw them in there. And then I think what made it, see Tom Hanks came to the first cut and he, he said, you know, people are either going to love it or they're going to hate it. Then he came to the second cut and he said, why is it four times better than the last time I saw it? And it was only one cut different, but I had changed all the words um, in the, in the musical pieces to, to carry the narrative. And in fact, but I was like, I knew I was being smart by not having you guys lip sync to any of the musical pieces because I knew at the end, like whatever movie we came up with, that is a really cute moment. Um, I know, I love it. I was like, oh. yeah, it was like, oh, together we could take. A I did. I was gonna say, I didn't even plan it. Um, <laughs> I thought it was well, planned. I was there, I'm like, like, oh, in my mind, I'm like, that's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were like that was. I it seemed planned to me, so that's amazing. You guys, <laughs> Ronnie, Ronnie does the together dance. She's two, and she <laughs> does this. Hi. Like she does the whole, it's so cute. I can't even take it. I like She says a lot. Ryan is an incredible choreographer. He's the most incredible choreographer. And we started working together on Chandelier. Now, he's so gifted. And, but we started a language together, which is why when you say it's sort of like, oh, because I want toddlers to be able to dance to the dances that Ryan choreographed. And at first, Ryan had been doing, I know, like lots of pop stars dancing. And the first pass of Chandelier had a little bit too much hip movement and sexiness to it. And Maddie was 11. And I said, no, can we pretend it's like a, like a gorilla, like a toddler dancing like a gorilla? Through, and also like a woman on the verge of a nervous breakdown. And, and so then together we developed this language that is like, because I was also like, only thing out there is like sex you know, for little kids in music videos, just like twerking and sexy dancing. And, and I was like, oh, like, and then they're learning that and then they're being objectified. And I was like, I want to create a new language in dance where it's not sexualizing, hypersexualizing and not objectifying of the dancer. Um, and so that's why we started. And, <laughs> and that's why it's sort of like sometimes it's like gorilla but a gorilla through a toddler's eyes is what I call our style of dance. <laughs> well, it resonates because Ronnie's like, you know, goes around doing it. So yeah, oh, wow. I want toddlers to be out of dance to it. <laughs> um, See, so yeah, as a director, you already elicited like th these three performances, each and on the way is just, you know, mind blowing. What do you love about each of their performances uh, and what they brought to the party that maybe wasn't even on the page? Well, I mean, Leslie brought a groundedness, um, which was really important for the movie. He had this earthiness, this groundedness that he, 
all the way through the film, he's got this earthy groundedness and this sort of compassion and strength and this kind of quiet strength. And um, that was really important. And, and got, we had a lot of notes back that he was an extremely lovable character. And um, thank goodness. And then um, with Kate, I mean, she just came in with that. Sh we shaved her head and she was like, I'm committed to this role. And um, I mean, there's this one line in the movie that she says when she's um, had too much to drink. And it's a line that not many actors would be brave enough to say. And she did it. And it's my favorite line in the movie. And she was very brave to do it. You know? And because you're a cast that seems to actually like each other, can you, rather than praising your own performances, uh, like Kate, what did you love about the other two, what they brought to their performances? Oh my gosh. I mean, I could honestly talk about this forever. I, I, I mean, number one, you know, I mean, two very different, like, yes, we all love each other, but it's two very different relationships to how, you know, it felt on set for me because Leslie, I mean, watching Leslie, first of all, in everything that he does that comes out of his mouth, I, you know, the, the, you know, it's the cliche of like, you know, you're only as good as the, as the actor you're able to work with. And like, and, and for me with Leslie, it was like, I really, really felt like I had a real partner and we had to do some really heavy scenes and I never ever felt like I didn't have him as a safety net in in you know and we and 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 with stuff like this I mean we're singing we're dancing we're you know um falling off the wagon I'm you know <laughs> we're falling in in and out of love where I mean it was it was it was like a there wasn't a day where we weren't working really hard on what we were doing and Leslie just like when you when when you feel that he is grounded in the movie I felt that way with him as a partner and um and um and with Maddie I mean I think the first time we started shooting together the first time I saw her get into character it made me incredibly emotional because she was so it, for for a number of reasons um one it it just her talent is, is, you know, is, is God sent. You, 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 you watch her movement. It's like, you got the, the, the talent that is God sent, but then you have the discipline is that's the work. And you have a young 14 year old girl who has so much discipline yeah. that she's able. The most professional actor I've ever worked with. <laughs> I mean, it's truly, it's truly, I mean, seriously. And, 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 and you can see the discipline and what they say about a great dancer is that you, you work so hard to, you know, it's like the, to, to, to abandon, to be free of the work, you know? And, and, and so watching her kind of process the character and the body movement and having it all kind of, the first time I saw it, I, I just, I mean, I'm, I'm literally getting chills right now because and you could feel her sensitivity to this. You could feel her desire to make sure that she was doing this right, that she was representing correctly. And, and she had a huge task. So not only did she, but you know, there's nobody else could have played this part. I mean, then she has to go into these numbers where she has to use her body in a completely different way. And, 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 and I, and, and it, it's it's interesting because it really is giving a different voice to children who who don't have that capacity. And um, I got I mean, I just I just felt uh, everything that I'm feeling in the movie <laughs> I was feeling it was so easy to get there based on the people that I was able to be working with. And um, and, and Maddie was it was just extraordinary. Thank you. And then on top of it, I just love her so much because yeah. she's like, you know. <laughs> and she's no no actor of bullshit. She would come straight in and out of character, like, just. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I you know, couldn't... Maddie works so hard, you have to tell her to sit down. Yeah. <laughs> Maddie, you have to be like, honey, you need to sit down. And just yeah. like, take a second. You have to, and... like, stop and be like, no, you need to eat food. 
and no, I know you'll work late and I know you'll break the law, but no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a problem. <laughs> uh, uh, Maddie, what do you what do you have to say about the other two and their performances? I mean, kind of how Kate was saying, like once we all were on set, it kind of felt like we were just the characters. It felt like it was our lives, weirdly enough. Like it didn't even feel like we were even playing these characters because we just became them all at once. And it was really crazy to me. I was so nervous, obviously, working with two of these two because like I said, I was I admired both of them so much and I cried so much leading up to this. But <laughs> Like, literally so stressful. But I would say, like, my experience with Leslie, like, I think one of the first uh, scenes we shot together was when you first are kind of introduced into the movie is when I have an episode and you come in and you carry me on your shoulder. And I instantly felt super protected by you as uh, not even just as like the character, but as it just in real life, like, because I had to punch you. And I remember each time you were like, you can, you can go harder. You can, you know, like you gave me the freedom to do so. And I instantly felt super protected by you. And I felt a sense of calmness with you. And that was really nice. And I instantly felt like, okay, this is going to be okay because I have you to help me and ground me, which was really awesome. And I learned so much from both of them. And then with Kate, I think just even when, the, what, how you were saying, Sia, like when you came over to the house uh, before, right after I was crying, and I think you even saw me cry too. Um, I think like instantly, I remember sitting down at your, like, what was it, dining table? And I, you gave me like some, I guess, crayons to color with. And you were saying some lines or I don't even know what was happening, but it just felt like you were my sister in that moment. And I felt like family with you. And that was such a crazy experience for me because I was like, I feel like I've known you my whole life. And we just became sisters in that moment, which was really, really amazing. And then like, even in dance rehearsals with you, it felt so just right, like nothing was off about it. And every day working with you was so incredible. I learned so much and I was like in awe the whole time. And I just could not imagine playing anyone else's sister in that moment. And it was just the best experience. And I cry because it's so good. I know it was the best. I get really emotional too, just thinking about it. Like we're sitting here, we had such amazing time. It really was an emotional experience. The whole thing, you know. I think it, it's because, and and I, I, I don't, I, Leslie, I want to, I really want to, you know, Leslie, but uh, but but there was so much love, you know, and that's what the movie was is about. It, it's just about love, isn't it? It's about accepting that you're lovable or that you have the capacity to love. It's like what everybody needs to hear right now. Um, it couldn't be more timely it, with all people, you know, and in in you know we're all different, but we all can love each other, you know, and that's really what this movie is about. Um, and it makes, I mean, it makes me emotional seeing my sister, emotional, <laughs> but it's true. That's what it, that's what it was. Absolutely. And, and Leslie, it's interesting. I think Kate used the word grounding. My sense when I watch the movie late at night on my computer and it's almost like, it's not just a movie. It creates its own world. And then when I, when your character emerges, I feel like it does make it grounds it in the in on earth and it makes it so real. And then you fall in love with your character because he's holding this is a world that's being held together and he's a big part of that glue. Uh, but I wonder uh, for you, what was it like acting besides these two incredible uh, actors? Coming from the theater, um, I was very impressed with like Kate was picking up some of that choreography way faster than I was. <laughs> Kate was on that choreography like and again, you know, I was like, again, girl, like I'm tired. But <laughs> you were just out of you were out of condition because you just had a baby. Oh yeah. Like, That's why you were like you were like yeah, I was like, you need to start dogging in the morning. <laughs> you ain't lying. I see. I know, it. You were like, you, but you caught up like crazy. 
Like Jesus. you, you gave you gave up your whole personal life and your joy <laughs> in food, <laughs> and you got real you got real fit for that part, and you got fit quickly because we only had two months of prep. Yeah, so we you had- it was mount- mountains was nuts. Oh no, God. unbelievable. I mean, mountains, like it was so, I mean, what we were doing and it was like, you know, at the, by the end of it, we were, we were both like, <sighs> like learning that routine was, I loved, I loved that I had no hair. The only hair I had was like a little trim. I'd wake up in the morning, I'd take a shower. It felt like amazing on my head I really love that too because originally you had long long hair wig oh yeah we had like 90s drew barrymore hair but then i put more hair on you and then uh and then i and then i was like nah let's do it because your head shape was so amazing when we wrapped your head in cling film when we took you to get your wig fitted kate and we wrapped your head in cling film and i was like the shape of your head is so beautiful we should shape it we've got to shape it let's do that it was, we, you know, we were not sure whether it was either, either way. And then I, used, uh, I took pictures of your head from every angle and I was like, look at it. It's a beautiful, do you have a doll head? <laughs> and you were like, okay, let's do it. And I was like, yeah. And then the, producer, <laughs> um, uh, the line producer was like, oh, thank God. Because we had <laughs> two hours less makeup and hair in the morning and we had two hours more to make beautiful art. Uh, <laughs> Kate, as someone who is one of the stars of the best rock movie, music movie maybe ever and almost famous. Do you think music has a different way of reinventing the musical in a whole different artistic way? Is it, do you, do you see music as a, a, a musical in, its, in a whole new way? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, 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 I felt that way when I saw it. The last time that I saw it, I had seen it. And I was like, you know what? I just want to see it again. You know, you, you see it the first time and it, when you, and, and I saw all the changes and I was so happy. And then I left, I called the producer, I called Vince. I was like, can I see it again? And, and I sat and I was like hooting and hollering throughout the movie. I, I, like a number would come on and it was me and my agent and we were going like, woo! you know we were having these moments of of like and singing and and I was like oh my gosh and it's not like any other musical it's this is not where no one's breaking out in song it's I a it, <laughs> I literally it's a, hate, hate hate loads musicals I I look at it as a musical experience and and not a a, 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 a typical musical and um but see I I think it's probably the reason why I got almost famous was because of the way I talked to Cameron about how I feel about music. And to me, I think one of the most under, I mean, I, people know this, but, but it's not, it takes a particular type of director to really be able to have the musicality to understand how music can, can, can elevate and transform a film. And, um, and so, yes, I mean, I music transcends everything to me, and um, it's the great unifier, and it's the great uniter, you know. And and um, and I think you feel that in this movie. It's so true. Um, I remember going to um, Europe. I was working uh, with a, with a big music. I was working with Neo on a movie in Europe. And it was the very first time that I understood, I understood the power of music internationally, like the power of what somebody like Sia has done. You know, we were in Prague and Neo was famous in Prague. (laughs) But his music, his music unites, it, it crosses cultural language, you know, ages it crosses those boundaries and it unites people it's what it's why people are excited about all the wonderful things the wonderful collaboration that Sia and Maddie have done all these years there that's an international moment and movement um so yeah the, this this movie i certainly hope it has that kind of scope you know has does does a similar thing I hope so too. And I think, it, I mean, I hope, I mean, all my favorite movies growing up um, was a bit of a movie nerd. And yes, there was obviously 
the ones I'd put mentioned previously, but I also was like really, um, uh, my parents were hippies and there was this one movie theater in Adelaide that had all um, international films and they were all with subtitles and, um, you know, my life as a dog and like, um, uh, like Leolo, what's that movie? Cinema Paradiso. Um, mm -hmm. And so there's these movies that I also grew up with that had this magic and had this uh, raw, uh, there was a raw for the, and that's what I wanted for our natural, for our, the natural narrative. I wanted this sort of European raw feeling um, originally. And then, and for the musicals, I wanted it to be very like high, like de high density color. You know, I've been trying to straddle the line between art and commerce for a long, like, for my entire, like, career, but I only really <laughs> nailed it once I got sober and turned, like, 35, and um, that's when I became <laughs> successful. <laughs> and, um, and so uh, I'm saying, same for, for this is that I wanted, I, yes, I wanted to make art, but, of course, I want people to see it and I want people to have feelings and get feelings from it, and that's the whole purpose of I think art anyway is to create feelings and allow people to project onto what, you know, onto a song or a movie, their own experience, their own life, or, you know, be able to touch into their own sadness or their own joy um, through mirroring what's on the screen, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I, like I, I know my music, I, I think I'm more successful in Europe than I am in America. So I hope to think that my uh, that this movie will translate it as equally as my music has in Europe. I really hope so. And this feels European, this movie, to me anyway, to a degree. Well, two last questions, and everyone can jump in. But one first one is, I think everyone needs music. This movie, in general music, this character, everyone is something they could learn and feel moved by and feel uplifted by. Who do you want to see music? I mean, everybody, and that's why, everybody. I, that's why I cast it the way I did. You know, Maddie, we've got Maddie, who's got the, the tweens and the teens um, following, this massive following. We've got Kate, who's got this commercial following that's like, you know, all of her fabletics and, her, and like, you know, being tabloid fodder as well. Like she's got a whole different, like, you know, and, and the acting, you know, world, like just fans. So she's got a lot of followers. And then we have this Tony award-winning actor, Leslie, who comes from Broadway. And last question for everybody, what do you think we can learn from music? What does this character, this movie have to teach the world, especially at this moment? Because one thing, watching it while watching the news and debates and other stuff, I thought, this is like a movie about human connection. And- It's about compassion. I think- for me, I, I think, um, and I, you know, you can say Morsi. You should say Morsiya because it's your movie. Um, uh, I, 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 I bet it'll teach people lots of things, and they'll, you know, choose their own adventure. But on some, I'll tell you what it taught me. It really taught me about um, the limits that I place on my own imagination. Um, working with somebody like Sia, who, you know, just it seems to me as a collaborator that she really just didn't, she doesn't judge the, the things that come to her, her inspiration, the things that drop in, you know, wherever they come from, they come to her heart, they hit her, and she does her best to see them through. How many, you know, how many times do those, do we get hit with things that we think are great ideas, but ah, I shouldn't, that, I should, I'm not the one to bring that into the world, or I don't know how that possible. We judge our, we judge these channels, our, our creative channel. And this was the first time that I was really in an environment working with someone so closely whose, whose channel is not blocked by their own judgment and their own stuff. And so I really hope that people see it and it, and it sort of, um ignites and encourages uh them to think in a limitless way to get to to get that ceiling out of the way and use their imaginations in ways that they've never imagined before yeah
That's and really love cool. that so much. Yeah. And it's, it's about, about like, three or four years old that you have that your the imagination kicks in, and um and if it's not nurtured, um it can be really you know damaging to that that when you're an adult you can't see past things. But if the imagination is nurtured, there is no two people on the spectrum that are alike. That everybody. Ha- is different and so at least we have that on our side that you know I did my very best to translate Stevie from AA into music um and that uh, I know that if Stevie's mum saw this movie she'd know that it was him um and they got thank yous in the end so hopefully they'll see it and they'll, and they'll know and now then they can be thankful um yeah i don't know it was it was scary as shit i I was a baptism by fire and but i just went boldly where i'd never been before and i had a great team you guys all helped me a lot because you'd done it before and also my producer vincent landay unbelievable producer adaptation being john malkovich like he was a genius is a genius and he helped me and I'd often defer to him because I'm not an idiot and because it was my first time and it was his like sixth or seventh and I was like well I want to do this but are you telling me that's the that's the wrong thing to do that I might regret that and he was like why don't we do both and that's what I love about Vince is that he'd always let me try something and then he'd say, and now let's do a safer version. And um, But I think we ended up using most nearly everything that was the unsafe version. And uh, I think I have a lot to, I have, you guys, <laughs> I have you guys to thank for helping me make this dream come true. And Vince and Ryan, the choreographer, like there's no way this movie would have happened without him. Um, I'm just like really excited. It's the for me it's the best thing I've ever done. It's the most it was the hardest and it's the most meaningful and the most difficult. Love was, you. Yeah. Love, love you. you. <laughs> it was like really it was just the best experience and I was so lucky cuz you know we had each other and I had Tonya who's my friend and makeup artist and who did all Maddie's makeup and hair and who made this amazing headpiece out of socks and <laughs> um, you can tell there was a lot of crying on this set. There, there's a lot of tears in this group. <laughs> We're all very easily, easily, you know, it was, talk about being ignited, Leslie. We just, it just takes one little thing. <laughs> it was a very special, very special set. Everybody came to work that I knew of, unless they were keeping it a really great secret. Everyone, the crew and the cast came to set excited to be there every day. And that I know is very rare in the movie industry, which by the way is glacial compared to the music industry. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I kind of want to add a little bit if I can onto what you're saying, because I'm feeling this right now. And it's like, Leslie was talking about imagination. I thought that was so beautiful. And Sia's, you know, she, there was so much love put into this. And I think that it, it's, it's also, and I, I said that prior, but to, for me, that's what the movie was for me. It was about how we love and, 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 and it's called music. And, and, and to me, music is love. And in its purest form, the character music is pure love. And it's how do you, how do you accept that? And love comes in, it's, it's, it ha- love has to be activated. And it has to be, you know, you may say love is a verb. It is a verb. We have to activate it. We have to actively seek it. We have to actively show it. And um, and it's hard and life is hard and it's hard to feel like, you know, sometimes love can feel so overwhelming that we choose to push it away. And, and Sia has this 
I mean, you know, you can tell, I mean, she just, she loves so deeply and, and it's at the, I, to me at the, at the core of what this movie's about. And, and, um, and then, you know, so I think she got the right cast because we all are very loving <laughs> and accepting. <laughs> because the thing is, is that you all gave me feelings, right? But is there anything anyone wants to say? Uh, Maddie, I don't know if you want to say anything about what music, you know, you had to become music. So I wonder what you think you, you know, people can learn from this character and from this movie. I mean, everything that they were just talking about, about love, it's, it's mainly like, to me, I feel like music is acceptance and that's what it means to me. Like, I feel like as music playing her, I felt so accepted and that's how I feel like everyone will take away this movie. I hope is that it's all about acceptance. We accept all of each other, however we come and we don't try and change anything about that. And that's the biggest takeaway I've learned from this movie. And I feel like that translated into my everyday life. And I'm so thankful for that. And I've learned so much from it. And yeah, I mean, that's everything that everyone's already said is everything that I've thought is just, it's about love. It's about warmth and being welcomed. And that's everything that I hope everyone learns and takes away from this movie. I think that's great. This has been more emotional than I even expected, but that's like the movie. I just was, I think it's, 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 it's a unique, powerful thing. Thank you very much. This has been a pleasure. Thank you.